Okay, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about why Detroit. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world. So hey y'all, welcome to another vlog, a little bit more food for thought. Today I thought I was gonna talk a little bit about um, you know, just Detroit in general and uh, to give you guys an update, I want to be focusing just over the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I just finished uh, producing this conference. First of all, there's going to be a little bit of noise going on because there's some work happening at the house and you guys are just here, right? And, you know, I don't have a studio set up, so you guys are just experiencing um, life in this space as it is. And so um, you guys know that I raised some funds to do some work in the basement to deal with um, the flooding that was going on. So we actually have the plumber in here today starting, starting that work. Um, another thing that is on my radar is I know that the hearings with James Comey started just a couple of days ago. And I don't know if any of you have had a chance to listen to them, but just hearing the, the tone of those uh, hearings so far, I'm not really that convinced that they're, you know, interested in really uncovering the truth, but really just going through the motions so that everybody can say, well, they had a hearing, whatever. I don't want to make a big thing about that. I don't really want to talk about electoral politics. I don't want to talk about, you know, that person in the White House because, you know, my understanding of what is happening in the world goes so, uh, goes so deep, so much deeper than, you know, politics and goes into, well, it's about politics, but it's not, uh, um, really this charade for what passes for an excuse for a political system that we have here in the United States of America. But that's a whole other thing. So um, we are going to dig into some of that stuff uh, just over the, over the coming weeks, um, I hope. Um, I also want to just fill you in. I, so I talked a little bit about the conference and how things went, and there were some of you who had some interest in learning more about theater of the oppressed. And I hope that I gate was. I hope what I offered you guys in terms of uh, just a like a a quick definition of it and a little bit of background was enough to serve. I'm going to be bringing you. It's really getting loud, y'all. So uh, really sorry. Really, really, it's really happening. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping to share with you some of the work. So I'm going to take the camera out uh, when I'm doing some of the work with the students from Purchase. And we're going to be interviewing some of the students from Purchase. And they're going to talk to you about Theater of the Oppressed from their perspectives. They're also going to be talking to you about Detroit. So yeah, so basically, um, you know, you guys may be wondering, you know, why Detroit, why I chose to move from Brooklyn and come to this place. And it's not something that I've talked about very much. And it's not, and it's something that I'm still grappling with myself. And, um, you know, thank you all for your, you know, constant interest and your constant patience and your constant questions about it. But um, we have this group here from SUNY Purchase and the day after they arrived, we went on a tour with Richard Feldman, who is on the board of the James and Grace Lee Boggs Center for Nurturing Community Leadership. And this tour really looks at the development of industry in Detroit through to late stage capitalism, which is where we are now. And it looks at the auto industry, obviously, that, you know, Detroit was, people will tell you, Detroit was built on the auto industry. And also the decline of the auto industry has a lot to do with why Detroit is what it is today. Um, and that is, if you think about it in a nutshell, you could say that, you know, that is the issue with Detroit, but you, it's hard to have a conversation about Detroit without looking at the fact that it is a majority black city and how uh, the way that the state moves in and manages development in an all black city um, and particularly the way that it that it has here in Detroit with the institution of a, you know, obviously declaring bankruptcy and the institution of an emergency manager and going from a city that has had predominantly black leadership in a predominantly black city to a city that suddenly has a white mayor um, is pretty meaningful to a lot of people. But just to talk about um, 
you know, going back in history and looking at the fact that Detroit is a predominantly African, uh, uh, you know, African American, predominantly uh, black city for a reason. Uh, there was a period in our history when black people were, you know, liberated from slavery and living in the South and were subject to the, you know, harsh Jim Crow laws and lynchings. And, you know, the word on the street was that you would lynch a Negro every weekend so that Negroes would act right during the week. So um, it was a really harsh, harsh concrete situation that people were escaping from. And the idea is that, you know, this great migration that happened from the South to the North and from people going from their jobs in agriculture in the South where they were sharecroppers and also, you know, just subject to, you know, you know, harsh Jim Crow laws, um, moving to the North for opportunity, right? So that's kind of the, the narrative is that people moved because there were jobs. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that people were just moving to escape the persecution of life in the South. So that's something that has to be taken into consideration. So you have people who are, you know, basically refugees from their own homes moving into cities to become part of this new industry that was happening in the North in cities that are now known as the Rust Belt, right? Um, but Detroit definitely being one of them, and for people moving to the Detroit and into Detroit, they were they were becoming part of the auto industry. Uh, so you have an influx of Africans into these cities, where you know, let's make no mistakes. Just because we were in the North didn't mean that there wasn't still racism, that there there still weren't people embracing racist ideologies. And in Michigan, um, this, the, 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 uh, that was the case. Um, you had several race riots where um, black communities were burned to the ground in Detroit. So just, you know, keep in, keeping in mind that you have a city like Detroit that is one of the places where African Americans have moved to escape violence, to escape persecution. And suddenly there is this opportunity to become a you know, productive part of the middle class. And that is indeed what happened. You had many African American middle class communities that were segregated because of racism but thriving communities with thriving economies. And, you know, we have to be aware of the contradictions. We have to be aware of the fact that the work that was being done is, you know, destructive to the environment, that the work that was being done was dependent on the access to cheap oil that was generally being taken from, you know, places like the Middle East, Africa, South America. Um, you do have to be aware of those contradictions, but, um, in the United States, at least, in places like Detroit, blacks were benefiting from the exploitation that was happening in other places in the world, like most other Americans. Um, and then you have, you know, this uh, economy that continues to grow. You have an economy that is bolstered by, you know, two world wars. You had the First and Second World War. And the Second World War in, in particular that leaves most of the world's economies in shambles. And the U.S. Uh, coming out of the Second World War unscathed. And so suddenly you have the U.S. moving into position number one as the world's, you know, strongest economy and car manufacturing being a huge part of it. And this was something that lasted, <laughs> this is something that lasted basically from the end of the, the Second World War through to the 70s, where you had this, you know, this, um, booming economy, or at least I want to say into the 60s, you had this booming economy happening here um, 
But you did have things like the rise of automation that was, you know, serving as a threat to some jobs, to some jobs. And so you see um, blacks steadily being um, uh, shut out of the wealth that was being built up in the United States. And that includes things like, you know, there were, there were uh, benefits that went to folks who had served in the military that African Americans did not have access to because um, you couldn't get a loan if you were a black person if you wanted to move into a white neighborhood, for example. And if you were in a black neighborhood, there was something called redlining, and so you might not be able to get a loan because you lived in a black neighborhood. So um, a lot of folks were shut out of things like the GI Bill and the home loans that were part of the GI Bill. So um, just understanding that Detroit, um, the segregation that has happened in Detroit, the way that the in, that industry built up in Detroit, the way that that led to the, the development of a very large African-American middle class buying homes, you know, uh, and then suddenly you have um, the, the introduction of of automation and so suddenly you have a black middle class that's becoming more and more a lower a black lower class um, just because the jobs that were available went to white employees um, and we could say that that's because of racism we could say that that's because you know those were the folks who were here first who knows even though you know we know how they really got here how folks really got here but um, so you see this separation between um, African Americans and whites. Suddenly, this economic um, disparity is beginning to emerge between African Americans and whites. But still, you had a you know you had booming uh, African economies, um, African American economies in in Detroit, and then. Uh, something happens in the 60s and the 70s and we see an end to the American to America as the you know lead in the auto industry we see you know cars being manufactured in other countries basically the rest of the countries who had suffered um, from devastation after the Second World War we see them finally getting themselves on their feet and starting to produce cars of their own, we see cars, we see people on the East Coast and the West Coast starting to purchase cars from, you know, Asia and from Europe, and the U.S. auto industry starts to suffer greatly. So we have not only the, you know, introduction of uh, automation, that's meaning fewer jobs are available, but we're actually seeing the factories not selling cars so that, you um, even more people end up out of work. We see factories in the cities closing down. We see factories moving to the suburbs because you can get a lot more land and you can get more land cheaply. And so you see a steady divestment from the city of Detroit as the industry that had built the city itself starts to fade, basically. And we see the auto industries that um, so many people had depended on for their jobs going to where they can produce um, uh, most the most cheaply, right? Because they're not the sole pr provider. They have to compete on um, uh, with the rest of the world. And so, um, you know, all a lot of this is kind of like things that I'm really being introduced to and just really starting to think about. And understanding that what has happened in Detroit. Now we look at Detroit and we see Detroit as the city that, you know, where, you know, it was a failed, you know, a question of failed leadership, where it was a question of, you know, the fact that, you know, black people don't know how to act, right? Whatever it is that you want to say about the way Detroit got to be the way it was, um, one has to look at the way capitalism has played a role and um, uh, capitalism you know, functioning in a way that benefits a, you know, a few, a minority, right? Even if it's, you know, uh, benefiting most Americans, most American, most Americans by, by and, I, and I should say U.S. citizens, most U.S. citizens benefiting from an industry in the way that uh, most U.S. citizens were benefiting from the auto industry doesn't mean that, you know, it was healthy for the rest of the world, right? Healthy for the planet. And we see that um, ultimately, you know, these giants, 
when we see them fall, we see what they look, the kind of footprint they live, leave behind. And that footprint is what you see of Detroit now. So regardless of what anyone will tell you about leadership or politics or, um, you know, social failings of, you know, a cultural failings of Africans or black people. Um, you can't talk about what's happening in Detroit right now without talking about, you know, the failing of capitalism, the failing of capitalism in the city. And so I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that and get your thoughts and feedback. There's so much um, reading that can be done on Detroit and I'll leave, leave some links in um, the description box below. Anyway, so um, the trip continues and we'll have the students and I'll be continuing with these and like looking specifically at um, particular moments in the history of Detroit. I do wanna um, tell you guys, so so yesterday I talked a little bit about, um, you know, my, the, yesterday's video was titled, you know, am I even still vegan? And I, I was titling the video that for a particular reason, because something happened here at Alt Space. No, I didn't eat animal products, but, we went while we were on the tour and learning so much about the history of Detroit. And I will be trying to share a little, um, some actually some footage from the tour, which I took the last time um, we did it back in March with um, the group that was here from Morocco and Indonesia. But um, one of the things that we did on the tour was we went to a bakery. Now, it's a wonderful bakery and they do make a lot of vegan products, but not everything that they make is vegan. And, you know, the group is being vegan while they're here in the house because Alt Space is a vegan space. But before we left the bakery, the owner of the business comes up to me with a bag of scones. And I don't think they were vegan. And I didn't ask if they were vegan. And so this was, a, this was someone who was offering a gift. It was food that I'm not sure if it was going to be thrown away. I'm not sure what was going to happen with it, but she walked up with, to me with a bag of scones and I thought to myself, I could say to this person right now, I'm vegan, right? Speaking for the entire group. I could say, well, they can't go back to the house because the house is vegan. Or I could think about how saying that in this moment is going to be closing the door on conversations that I might be ha able to have with this person. You know, this is a business that might be able to provide vegan products for Alt Space in the future and do it at a rate that, you know, is affordable for people who are coming from, you know, wherever they're coming from to learn about veganism, to learn about Detroit um, in Alt Space. And so I accepted the gift of the scones and it had me questioning my um, commitment to being vegan. Now, of course, those scones were already made. I didn't request the scones. I don't feel like I was creating a demand for the scones by taking the scones that were probably gonna be thrown into the trash can. I know that, you know, Gary Francione would probably chew me a new one if, you know, just for talking about that, even for asking the question. But um, I felt like it created a space to ask, to um, have a conversation about the deeper kind of, uh, kind of underlying principles of veganism with the group by taking the scones and then talking about, you know, why I took the scones and what pro what the scones might be made from that are pro problematic, even if, you know, there aren't animals that, you know, we, the, you know, we think of about eating like the eggs that might be in the scone or the dairy that might be in the scones or butter that might be in the scones, right? Which is dairy. Um, just to be able to have the conversation about those things and, you know, understand that veganism is more than just not consuming animal flesh, but there are other animal products and to talk about the commodity status of animals and um, the, you know, the, the, their secretions as well, right? So I felt, so I took the scones and we did later on have a conversation about the scones and I, you know, they ate the scones. So in a completely vegan space, there were scones that were being consumed. So I don't know. I would like to know from you if um, you find that disappointing, if you understand it. Um, uh, I certainly am conflicted and, and feel that there are many contradictions in the action. But again, as I said, I feel like there is space in the future to have a deeper conversation with this space that might be able to provide more vegan products 
to Altspace and, you know, as we do tours in the future, I might be able to, in advance, ask for them to prepare specifically vegan options and, you know, be really clear with them about what vegan was. The person knew I was vegan. I think they just didn't understand that scones weren't vegan. So just to make clear what that was about. They knew I was vegan, knew it was a vegan space. I think she thought it was vegan. I, I could have made, you know, uh, you know, uh, an example of her made it, a, but it would have been ultimately embarrassing to say to this person in front of a large group of people while she was trying to, you know, be generous to, you know, me and support the work that I was doing to shoot her down and tell her, oh, you, you screwed up. That's not vegan. So yeah, let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about anything that I've said in this long and rambling video. And please do let me know if you thought it was rambling, like, you know, let me know. Put some comments in the comment section. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself.